Behind me is our deep water culture pond. Deep water culture is a system for uh, growing hydroponically where we're using water and nutrients instead of soil to grow the plants. The way we do it, we float on 18 inches of water. That water depth can vary, but that is kind of the, the industry standard. And we're using it to grow primarily leafy greens and herbs. So we've done lettuce heads, we do arugula, we do a lot of collard greens because that's popular in, in our area. We've done basil, we've done chives, we've done a number of different herbs and different products, but it's primarily a, a useful tool for, uh, for growing uh, leafy greens and herbs. Like I say, we're floating on 18 inches of water. The pond, we make our ponds out of dimensional lumber that you can buy anywhere and you just cover the whole thing over with a uh, pond liner. And then you're going to have a plumbing system, which can vary uh, system to system, but you want to keep the water agitated all the time, keep it moving through the plumbing system. And most situations in most climates, you're going to need to supply oxygen through one form or another. In this pond that we're looking at right here behind me, we actually use compressed oxygen and we pipe it into the system, um, which is good and useful during the summer months. The rest of the year, we can get by with just using a very simple fitting called a venturi valve. Um, and most of the country, when you're not here in the deep south, you can fly on venturi valve with, through a proper, um, you know, plumbing system all year long. Um, and in our other system, our original deep water pond, that's all we use is venturi. Now it does limp along during the summer months, and we intend to change that and supplement oxygen there this this coming summer, but most of the country you can get away with with just a venturi setup deep water is one of our favorite systems and primarily that's because it has a lot of fail safe built into it a lot of things can happen and because you're literally floating on a bed of water you have a lot of leeway there a lot of things can go wrong a lot has gone wrong in our greenhouse and in our system and we live to tell the tale so we've had the air conditioner go out and it was like 5,000 degrees in here during the summer month. We had it go out for a full, a full day. And I mean, it was so hot in here. I mean, it felt like the surface of the sun or something, you know, and I was sure everything was going to die and a lot of stuff did die, but the deep water ponds both survived. We, we bolted a few heads. We've had our pumps go out. We've had clogs in the pump. We've had the oxygen systems go bad. All kinds of things have happened. Um, but because of the way the system is designed, it's very robust and it has a lot of fail safe built in. So for that reason, primarily, we love the deep water culture pond. So the, the fail safe, I mentioned the fail safe a few times. The fail safe is that it has a large capacity for, for temperature regulation because it's, it's 18 inches of water. I and mean, this is like 7,000 gallons of water. Also, they're very stable system. You know, once you get your nutrients and everything charged in, uh, charged up, then they're going to they're gonna stay stable for a very long time. They're not volatile at all. So those two things are, are what really makes it a very useful tool, especially for us growers in the South. Water has an amazing ability to retain its temperature, right? It's a, it's a great thermal battery in essence. And because of that, once you, once you get it set up, once you get it stable and you're at the right temperature, it's going to stay that way for a long time. And, and it's insulated more or less too, because we do the way we design ours, you know, it, it's twin wall um, lumber, and then we have foam padding all sides of it too. So it's insulated as well. And I mean, imagine if, if, if we were, if we had the ability to, we could even bury it in the ground and that would probably make it even more stable and more temperature regulated. Um, unfortunately, you know, we're on concrete here and that's just the way that's going to be. But uh, if you had the ability to bury it in the ground, your reservoirs in the ground, that's even better. Uh, but they're just very, they're very stable temperature wise and, and nutrient wise once you get them, once you get them uh, set up right. So we mix our nutrients a little differently than a lot of commercial growers. We actually do everything manually. And it's very simple and easy. Uh, we mix an A, B solution, stock solution. And we add them um, in equal measures by five gallon buckets. <laughs> it's real old school what we do here. A lot of other growers in fancier operations and, and, and more commercialized operations will actually use dosatrons or some type of injection system. We don't do that though. 
Um, we're, we're old school and we, we monitor using very simple pool instruments and we keep up with our pH where we want to fly between 5.5 and 6.5 for our and then we want to achieve what's called an electric conductivity of around 2.0 1.8 1 1.8 to 2.2 is where we want to be for our leafy greens and that's basically a measurement of how much fertilizer and salt is in the water deep water is one of the systems that really does want to be in a controlled environment especially in the south it's very limited uh what you'd be able to do with it outdoors so let's start with you want to be in an indoor setting of some sort a greenhouse is great totally you know sole source um indoor situation, totally controlled environment is fine also, as long as you can supply lighting. Um, where you definitely don't want to do deep water is on a rooftop garden or anywhere where there's weight limitations, because these things are heavy. You know, the, the materials that you use to construct them are heavy. And then also you're going to add a large amount of water, which is really heavy also. And between the two, you know, the, the weight limits are going to be tough. There are other systems that are better if you're looking for a rooftop garden. The, the main maintenance that's involved with these, again, you're going to be harvesting every week. You're going to be scrubbing and cleaning the rafts um, after you harvest. You're going to be replanting. Um, you're going to plant seedlings for these systems, which you do separately. You don't plant seed into the system, or, or you shouldn't. There's more efficient ways to do that. And then also you're going to be monitoring your water quality at least a few times a week. And you're going to be monitoring, again, you're going to be monitoring for the electric conductivity and the pH primarily. It's a good idea to keep an eye on the, uh, the water temperature so you're not getting too hot uh, during, during the summer months. You, you do want to look out for that. But that's it. I mean, you, you're a couple of days a week and you can get everything you need done in these systems. Again, because there's they're very stable. They're, they're very solid once you build a good system and get it set up properly. So that is your biggest nightmare in a deep water culture system or as a leak. We've had them, unfortunately. And what do you do about them? Well, you do your best to try and find the leak, which can be very difficult in some cases and in some, some cases impossible. About the only thing you can do, if you can, if you can find the leak, you can use Flex Seal. Um, you can use the tape, or there's a spray-on product. You may or may not, depending on where the leak is. If it's at the bottom of your pond, you may have to drain everything, let it dry out, and start over again, which which happens in farming all the time. You know, we we deal with that. That's that's life. And then you can address the leak. The other option is, especially if it's a new liner, if it's right out of the box, or if it's just a week or two old and it's it develops a leak you need to give it to your manufacturer and tell them hey you sent me a, a dud and make sure that they honor that and that's that's something that you should you should probably uh address when you're purchasing a liner from wherever you're buying it from is to make sure that there is some type of a warranty at least an initial warranty to to make sure you're not spending a lot of money on something that's going to fail so there's a lot of different ways that you can do, do or set up deep water culture ponds, okay? Uh, for us, we're on a concrete floor, right? We have a concrete pad. So we chose to use lumber to build our pond. I've seen them built out of cinder blocks, bricks, uh, two by fours, landscape timbers. I've seen all types of materials uh, used. Other people have, if you have a, a dirt floor, you can actually dig a large hole and bury it in. You, you don't really necessarily need materials. You can just dig the hole in the size that you want and then bury your pond liner, just like you would do a koi pond in your backyard. All different, different types of plumbing. There's not one solution to this or one way to do this. There's a number of different ways. Get in touch with other growers in your area or other people who have done it before or do some homework and, and feel out what system is gonna work best for you. So this is a closer look at the deep water ponds. Um, you can see the styrofoam rafts that we're growing on. This is a butterhead lettuce. This is actually uh, green onions that we're growing. Um, one of the other crops that we're kind of experimenting with, and you can see they do really well. Let me show you a tad bit about the plumbing that we have. So you can see we start with just a standard pool pump, right? So this water line right here is sucking the water in and it's going through the pump, and then it's going out this side. This is the discharge side, right? So this right here is sucking water up from the pond, 
from that corner, going through the pump, through the discharge side, and then comes out, we've got a pipe that goes all the way down. And then we've got three feet off sections uh, of each, uh, on each section, um, equidistant, that has just a short stub of a cutout, right? And then we just drill holes in the end of those pipes. So when we go through the compressed oxygen, which we're feeding into the system, it gets equally distributed throughout the front. So mostly that's important during the summer months. The rest of the year, we use this guy right here. Um, this is just a Venturi valve right here. So I'll just unhook this so you can see. So this guy is just sucking in oxygen, all right? As the water is passing through, um, pressure is just going to suck through the, this tube right here, go into the water. And that's fine for this time of year. We're, we're here in December in this greenhouse. It's not too hot out. Um, most of the year, that's all we need. It's just during the summer months that we need to supplement oxygen. And that, that helps keep the root system clean, keeps the plants growing really good and healthy. Here, I can kind of show you a little bit here. Let's see what these, see what these roots are looking like underneath. Snow white roots. You can see we're using basically this water as a replacement for the soil. So these roots, I mean, look at them. They're growing right down into that water just like they would in the dirt. So we do use a little bit of supplemental lighting. Um, this is a product from General Electric. You don't necessarily have to use supplemental lighting depending on what you're using your greenhouse for. I know several growers here in Texas who don't use supplemental lighting. Again, uh, every situation is a little bit different. It's ideal if you have the budget and can get into supplemental lighting. You want to have it as quickly as you can, but it's not altogether necessary. Um, we do use, in this greenhouse, we use shading. You can see the shading up in the ceiling. Uh, that helps keep the temperature under control in the greenhouse. Even on the days like today, it can get pretty warm in here. So you, you may need to have shading. You, you're going to have to have shading if you're growing in a, in a greenhouse eventually. And, um, and supplemental lighting does help. But yeah, that's deep water and you can see, so we'll be harvesting next week, towards the end of next week, we'll be pulling out all of these rafts. And again, we'll be harvesting the product. It gets packaged and then donated uh, to the different organizations that we work with. And the rafts are gonna get cleaned and replanted and then everything's gonna get pushed forward.